Howdy and welcome back. So we'll go ahead and uh, close out today's lecture with a brief discussion on preconditions and postconditions. And this will be um, in the functions that you're developing, this will be a good place to actually utilize um, exceptions to ensure that your assumptions that upon entering the function are uh, valid as well as um, after the computation has taken that any assumptions about what the product of that sequence of steps is, is also valid. So precondition, a precondition or predicate that must be true just prior to the execution of some section of code. That is how we will come to define a precondition in this class. If the precondition is violated, the effect of the code is going to be undefined. For instance, in our area calculation, we assumed that we had both valid width and height measurements, and that if those were invalid, then the actual effect of the code is undefined in the sense that our calculation of area will not be valid. So the question is, what do we do when the preconditions are vi uh, violated? We showed in, uh, when we're talking about exceptions, that uh, this would be a nice place to report that sort of error to the user and allow them to handle it in a way that they deem um, necessary, dependent on their application. Uh, similar to a uh, precondition, we also have post conditions. Instead of being at the, um, before the code is executed, a post condition is concerned uh, with something that must be true after the execution of that uh, block of code. Provided a valid uh, precondition, we should arrive at a valid uh, post condition, though there are uh, some times where we'll need to explicitly check this to ensure that uh, the post condition of our function is valid. And in the event that it is not, we could throw an exception to report that sort of error to the uh, user. It's always good to specify your post uh, precondition and post conditions in a comment uh, for your functions. I believe the style, uh, Google style guide has some information on how you can go about that. So here are just two examples and then we'll uh, go ahead and wrap up this lecture or lesson. First is with a my square root function. The assumption is, is that this will be passed a integer value that's greater than or equal to two or greater than or equal to zero, sorry. Uh, post condition will be that the square root of the number is uh, calculated. To check the precondition, we simply check if the um, argument used to initialize number is less than zero. We can go ahead and throw some sort of exception. In this case, I arbitrarily chose out of range, uh, along with the message that the square root of a number, uh, negative number was attempted. If the case that uh, we have a, the, the precondition is met in that we have a number greater than or equal to two, we jump over this conditional, we'd simply return. Uh, the computation of the square root of number. Over here, this is kind of similar to one of the lesson activities. Uh, I told you to ignore the case of an empty vector uh, when we were computing the minimum and maximum value uh, within some sort of collection of integer values stored in a vector. Here's one way to kind of deal with the empty vector case where a min and max value would not exist. The precondition to this function would be that we have a non-empty vector, something that we could actually compute a maximum value for. The post condition would be that the minimum value from values, in this case, the standard library vector is determined. So we can go ahead and start and say, hey, let's see if our precondition is met. If it's not, we can go ahead and simply throw an out of range exception that says, Standard library vector event is empty. So that's reporting again, this issue to the user and it would allow them to handle it as they deem necessary. If the precondition is met, we have something that we could go ahead and compute a maximum value for within this collection of integers. So we go ahead and start, we can initialize max to something within the range of our, um, of the integers present within values, set it to whatever is at location zero, and then we can begin looking forward from location one to the end of that vector and essentially compare the max value that we've observed up to this current point to the max value in the um, at the index where we're currently looking. And if we observe a greater max value, we could simply update it. And then at the end, we could return that to the user. 